Welcome everyone for High Performance Computing, Advanced Scientific Computing. Today we have lecture 12 and it's my pleasure to invite one of my PhD students, Reza, here to talk about computational fluid dynamics and finite elemente. He is really an expert in this field, many published papers, and he can tell you very much about it. Maybe you introduce yourself a little bit, Reza, before we get started. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Moise, for this invitation and this opportunity. I am uh, so happy uh, to, for this lecture. Uh, my name is Reza. Uh, I am currently a PhD student working with uh, a Moise research group, and Moise my, my supervisor. Uh, my background in the mechanical engineering and uh, CFD. Uh, and uh, currently, my focus on my PhD is on the uh, using uh, artificial intelligence with high performance computing for the CFD. Uh, so I am happy for this presentation. Please, Moise. Okay, so, but before we dive into the very interesting field of CFD that really requires HPC, and Razor will make a point in it, uh, especially towards the end of the presentation where we compare with a 12 year old uh, code, basically, where HPC was not at all common. Let us just review what we had the last time. And the last time was review um, of lecture 11 here, really about medical and health applications. It was a broad spectrum uh, presented by my other PhD student, Shadi Barakat here, that you see that is basically in, not in the CFD lab, obviously he is in our health and medicine lab that you see there. And there we also use um, neural networks a lot. And the neural networks you already basically have seen in lecture or practical lecture 10.1 or practical lecture 10.2 from my PhD student Rocco or so, we're very much based on image processing, right? But here, basically what we do is also lots of time series analysis. So a different type of neural network that you see here on the slides, a so-called recurrent neural network that is able to catch sequences and works with sequence data like time series um, from patient data. So it's a bit different from image analysis, but many of the data sets we have in practice in science and engineering are indeed, you know, really typical sentence ones, so like medical signals, but also of course speech, language in one way or another could be transformed to waveforms. And then again, is more a time series. And when when you use these cutting edge models, and we didn't really go deep into this, and Chadi had some other uh, models as well. But if you go deeper into this, you see here inside these cells of these recurrent neural networks now two variations of this, which come from deep learning, like LSTM networks and GRUs, long short term memory and gated recurrent units. And they have lots of functionality inside, which are all called gates. And to compute all of these gates, it means a lot of matrix multiplications, lots of computing to really learn these sequence data models. And that such is really definitively another use case for HPC. But I think I don't want to take more time here from Reza. He has lots of interesting material as well. So Reza, take it from here. Thank you, Luis. Thank you for this uh, review. Uh, before we're going to lecture 12, Competition Applied Dynamics and Finite Element. Uh, my background in uh, mechanical engineering, as I said, and my focus on the CFD. Uh, now I'm focusing on the power and scalable machine learning approach in the CFD application in my PhD study at the University of Iceland. Uh, before uh, we're going through the lecture on the CFD, uh, uh, first, I want to introduce uh, our community uh, at the uh, national competence of Iceland. Uh, we have uh, communities in the different uh, fields, uh, and our communities, it's in the CFD, we call it Simulation and Data Lab, a Computation of Light Dynamics. Uh, we have a board member from the University of Iceland and also uh, from Germany in our community. Uh, now we are participated in two projects in the European Union. It's EuroCC and COAs. Uh, in the COAs, uh, we have a research uh, with focus on the artificial intelligence uh, for a specific use cases in the fluid dynamics and mostly turbulence flow. Uh, and uh, we have a 
um, working on this project now. Uh, if I want to say uh, some detail about this project, the EuroCC uh, project uh, that has a partner from uh, almost all European countries and working to de developing the high performance computing uh, in the countries. Uh, and uh, CUOVAS, its project has a partner from the industry and institution and universities uh, working on the use cases. Uh, to use the HPC and artificial intelligence uh, to solving some specific problems. Uh, if you are interested, you can have a look on the web site of this project. Here you can see the link uh, and have more information about this project. Uh, about uh, this lecture, uh, firstly, uh, we will introduce the CFT and we will talk about the, some application. Uh, and uh, the Garnick equation in the CFT and the PDEs. And then we talk about the um, finite difference uh, equations. Uh, we will introduce uh, the lattice Boltzmann method, which is, uh, is a, an alternative uh, method for the traditional CFT. Uh, finite element method, which is mostly started with the solid mechanic and uh, has a two uh, method using the uh, fluid dynamics. The uh, finite volume method, we will talk about it, which is the most uh, using uh, method in the commercial codes. Uh, and then we will uh, going through the high performance computing in the CFD and why we need the HPC and how it's helping us. We will talk about the Excel scale complexity. Uh, then we can have a, a look on the turbulence flow calculation. Uh, and uh, why we are focusing on the machine learning approach in the CFT application. Uh, and in the end, we will have a look on the few examples from the CFT and uh, FIA. In the beginning, uh, let's have an introduction the, for the CFT. Usually in the um, engineering problem, uh, we have uh, three different perspectives to solving the engineering problem. It could be experiment, analytical solution, and numerical solution. Uh, the experiment uh, usually can be used for a specific problem. Uh, we have limitation for the measurement. It's costly because we need uh, specific tools. And uh, one of the problem is dissimilarity in this method. Uh, but the advantage of this uh, method, uh, we have a result from the experiment. Uh, we can use it for to validate the numerical result for the numerical methods we are using. The next one is the analytical solution, which is perfect because it's giving the exact solution and presenting general solution. But it's a very uh, restricted and it's limited for simplified problem, mostly linear. It's a very costly method, uh, and uh, for many problems, we don't have the analytical solution. Uh, so after these two uh, available methods, we can understand why we need to use the numerical solution, because there are many limitations on the experiment analytical solution. But the numerical solution, if we apply the sufficient method, uh, we don't have limitation on the method. but maybe in the competition we will face problem. Uh, it's reducing the computational and the operational cost. We can use it on the complex problem, usually for the geometry, uh, and we can validate the method before the application with a small solution or small model. Uh, but for the numerical solution, a two important point available we need the boundary condition and the initial condition. Sometimes we can define uh, these two conditions uh, for some problems. Uh, and then another one is the computing time that it depends on the computer power. Uh, and this point is related to high performance computing and why for some problem we need to have access to HPC. Uh, in the 
fluid dynamics, usually we have a governing equation and most of them, the partial differential equation, we call them PDEs. Uh, usually the computer does uh, understand the PDEs, but the computer can solve the algebraic equation. Because of this uh, reason, we break down uh, the, uh, the PDE's equation to algebraic equation by discretizing the domain of the problem. So we will have equation for certain number of cell or point or mesh, and we solve the problem. Uh, the governing equation, when we uh, using the first law of thermodynamic and Newton's second law uh, with uh, the mass equation uh, and momentum and energy equation, we will have the Noyer-Stokes equation, which is the main uh, equation in the fluid dynamics. In this slide, uh, let's have a um, review on the some uh, applications on the CFT. Uh, we can shortly say that the CFT using everywhere in the or life in the industry in many applications. The first example here is the simulation of the CFT for the uh, geothermal uh, well design. Uh, they considering the temperature of the water. Uh, the next uh, three picture are showing the COVID-19 spread. That this uh, epidemic we uh, Based and challenged with it in these two years. Uh, and it's showing how we're using the CFT to uh, consider these spread. The next example is the simulation of the CFT for uh, wind turbine. Um, in these days, the many countries um, investing and developing the industry for the uh, wind power energy. Uh, but there are many issues regarding the wind turbine. For example, uh, the leading corrosion is happening and reducing uh, the power generation, uh, sometimes 20 or sometimes 30 percent. Uh, so we need to do a simulation on the CFD to study these issues. And the other issues is the turbulence flow and the wake behind the turbine, which making uh, some uh, uh, point uh, we need to consider when we uh, designing the layout of the uh, wind farm. Uh, the next example is the, we can say one of the oldest and traditional application of the CFT for the aircraft and the aerodynamics, uh, which is most used. And uh, the another example is the medical application for body tissue, uh, which is using, uh, another example is the simulation for CFT for SpaceX Dragon, which is uh, related to our time and it's very new. Uh, the another example also is for the aerodynamic on the car, which is also traditional application. So we can say the application of the CFT uh, in uh, many fields using. So it's very important to can uh, use it and solve the problem uh, which this method. Uh, on the fluid dynamics and the Navier Stokes equation, uh, there are some uh, important uh, note we need to talk about them. Uh, the Navier Stokes equation, it's second order nonlinear partial differential equation and is quite formidable, uh, especially about the turbulence flow. Uh, in this slide, you see two pictures for laminar flow and the turbulent flow. The laminar flow is mostly uh, predictable and we have a uh, regular pattern to follow the flow. But in the turbulent flow, uh, it's very chaotic and uh, randomly, so we can't have a um, prediction or a pattern for it. Uh, so many studies uh, focusing on the specific cases and the turbulence flow to solve. Uh, in the Navier's equation, we have four unknown pressure and three component of the velocity. Uh, the Navier's equation has a three equation. So we are using the uh, uncompressible continuity equation 
to have a full equation for these unknown. But um, finally, we have a very limited number of the unknown analytical solution, uh, but with the CFD, uh, we can solve uh, many of them. Uh, when we're talking about the PDEs, the first method we're using in the uh, CFD, it's uh, a finite difference method. In the finite difference method, we are uh, classify the equation to hyperbolic, parabolic, and elliptic. Uh, this uh, classification based on the um, required uh, condition for this problem, because for each of them, we need a specific boundary condition, initial condition to solve them. The main thing in the finite difference method we need to using uh, a scheme or method that consistent and stable to leading to convergence solution. Uh, this consistency and stability is depend on the size of the discretizing that uh, we're making the uh, mesh grid or uh, the grid point. Um, if we have a, if we want to have a a roadmap for the uh, final defense method. Um, first, we uh, should know the governing equation for the physical model and uh, define the boundary condition, initial condition. Then we are discretizing the domain of the problem. Uh, then we will creating the system of algebraic equation for every uh, grid point. And then we're using the uh, appropriate uh, numerical method to solve the system of the equation, then we will, we need to use the computer to solve these kind of the <laughs> equations. And finally, the post-processing. In the final difference equation, uh, mostly we have two uh, scheme or method. It's called explicit and implicit. The difference between them, the explicit, we have one unknown in the equation, but Implicit has a more than one unknown in the algebraic equation. So the implicit will be a uh, hardship to solve it, but implicit always uh, stable and leading to convergence uh, results. Explicit, no, it's usually conditionally stable and we can use it in any condition. Uh, that's why we are interested to using implicit methods uh, in the final difference uh, because the implicit method it's uh, offer great stability but because we have more than one unknown we can uh, say that we have more computation time for this kind of the method uh, so here uh, we can figure out why we need the high performance computing in this part of the uh, implicit method. The other point is uh, regarding the meshing and the time step. The grid size and the time step we are choosing in the final difference method, it's directly related to stability and consistency. Uh, also, the time step and grid size impact the computation time. We can say when we have a smaller time step or a smaller uh, grid size, it's making more point and more calculation. We have bigger data, particularly in the three dimension. So the computation is increasing. Uh, these two uh, issues, it's meaning we are not free to choosing any size of the time step or the grid size. We need to find the optimum size of the uh, time step and the grid size uh, to have a, uh, a stable condition and also perform suitable competition time. Uh, sometimes if we can't uh, find the optimal uh, solution, uh, then we will have a very large computation time and we need uh, the high uh, HPC to uh, run these kind of the problem. For the algebraic equation, we have different methods. Uh, most, uh, we call them direct method and algebraic, and each one has a, a different uh, detail. 
uh, after this introduction about the finite defense method, uh, let's have a, a very a brief uh, introduction about the lattice Boltzmann method. Lattice Boltzmann method, it's an alternative for the traditional methods of the CFT. Uh, it has a different uh, fundamental and it's based on the Maxwell theory uh, when he said uh, it doesn't matter to study the individual particle behavior, or we can study the probability of the particle availability. So if we uh, have the probability distribution function, the PDF, uh, we can study the behavior of the um, uh, flow. Uh, in this method, we have seven variables, three components for the velocity or momentum and three components for uh, the position and one time. Uh, so uh, this uh, making the problem uh, most complicated. Uh, the method uh, included two fundamental concepts, collusion and streaming. Uh, and this is the basic equation for the streaming and collusion. P here is the external force, and usually we assume it is zero uh, in the particle views. Uh, after this change, we will see the Boltzmann equation, uh, which is uh, derived in 1872. Uh, and it's the uh, basic of the lattice Boltzmann method using this equation, but we need to define the probability distribution function to solve this equation. Uh, lattice Boltzmann method, now it's uh, developing and uh, trying to, uh, many researchers are trying to using this method uh, to develop it. For example, uh, many studying now in uh, the fluid dynamic studying uh, irregular uh, boundaries on the fluid dynamics uh, because it's with the traditional method, it's very hard, but with the lattice Boltzmann method, it seems easier and faster and we don't need uh, um, large computation. Uh, there are some advantage and disadvantages in this method, but we can say it's uh, developing now. Uh, the most thing related to the HPC, because this uh, method has a two steps, collusion and streaming, it's very useful in the HPC. Uh, the coding is very simple than the uh, traditional CFD, uh, and we don't need to consider the stability on the lattice Boltzmann method, uh, and the solution is very low cost. Uh, the next method in the CFD it's uh, using is the finite element method. Finite element method is started with the solid mechanic with direct method. Uh, and after that, it's developed in the uh, fluid dynamics. It's, we can say it's a complex method, uh, but uh, it's solving any problem with differential equation. Uh, so this is the big advantage on the finite element method. Uh, for the finite element, method, there are different uh, elements for one dimension, two dimension, and three dimension. And in a Floyd dynamic, we're using two methods calling variational and weighted residual. Uh, it's very strong method, but uh, because it's complex, so it's need to have an ability and a skill to use this method. Uh, next method is the finite, element, uh, finite volume method, uh, which is most useful method in the fluid dynamics and in the most uh, uh, open uh, source code and in the uh, commercial software, they're using this method because it's solving uh, structured and unstructured meshes. Uh, which is usually in the finite difference, we can do it. In the finite difference, we only can do it on the structured mesh. Uh, finite volume has a, this advantage that can use it for any uh, geometries and for the uh, complicated geometry also. Uh, 
uh, for the finite volume also there are uh, two dimension and three dimension volume uh, using in the discretizing uh, and uh, we can solve the problem uh, the main thing in the finite volume method, uh, it's based on the uh, divergence term that we are using divergence term to get integral uh, in the partial differential equation. Uh, we assume that uh, the flux entering the surface of the finite volume and when it's leaving the volume entering the adjacent volume. So this method is calling conservative. Uh, the conservative and, and non-conservative, uh, the concept in the fluid dynamic uh, very important in some equation. For example, uh, uh, when we have shock wave uh, in the compressible flow, we can't use uh, conservative uh, method. Uh, there is a very fundamental uh, concept when we're using the conservative or non-conservative. But the, basically the finite volume method is the conservative because it's integral method. For the differential uh, method, uh, when we have differential equation, it's usually non-conservative. Um, usually uh, in the finite volume, it's referred to the small volume surrounding uh, each node point, and we are getting the uh, value for that uh, point in the node. Uh, one of the benefits to using the finite volume uh, for uh, some problem when we have the pressure and velocity coupling, we have two kind of the mesh staggered and collugate grid. Uh, for uh, this kind of the problem, uh, usually for structured grid, we are using the staggered, uh, and for unstructured, we are we are using uh, the collocated. The difference between these two grid is this one that staggered grid uh, for the scalar variable like pressure and density, they are stored in the uh, cell center of the control volume, but the velocity or momentum that they are uh, vector variables, they are located in the cell phase. But in the collocated grid, uh, the, all the variable is stored in the same position. Uh, this was very uh, short review uh, for the methods that they are using in the Floyd dynamics. Uh, for the computation. Uh, finite volume method, which was the last one uh, we talked about it, it's using in the most commercial codes in ANSYS Applied Computational Fluid Dynamic, Azure, and also for open source codes like OpenFORM, uh, Calculix, CANS, it's the uh, open source code from the uh, researcher at the University of Iceland, Pedro Costa. Uh, here you can see uh, a screenshot for a Utah supercomputer at the University of Iceland that we have a module for ANSYS Fluent. Uh, usually uh, the commercial codes uh, has a generation software and uh, also a flow visualization. So we can solve the problem from the beginning to end and post-policy. Post -policy. Uh, now, after this uh, talk about uh, the CFD and the method we are using and how the computing time increasing, uh, we can uh, talk about the HPC and why we need it. Uh, here there are two examples uh, for uh, the heat exchanger in the industry. Uh, maybe when we look at them, they uh, same, but. Uh, for the left uh, side uh, model, it's taking 12 hours uh, to get the result with uh, 16,000 cores. Uh, this uh, simulation and uh, this solution is done on the Mira supercomputer. Uh, and uh, the right hand side is taking three days uh, because the, uh, the phenomena is uh, non-linear. 
So a very simple change, very simple detail changing. Uh, it's uh, making a huge difference. Uh, and uh, this uh, causing we need to use HPC for our solution. Uh, let's have a, a very mm, mm, uh, simple calculation regarding the using uh, HPC for the turbulence flow. When we're considering the Noyer-Stokes equation, uh, we can find the number of uh, degree of the freedom for the turbulence flow from the Reynolds number. With this equation, that degree of the freedom is uh, Reynolds uh, uh, to the uh, 9 over 4. Mm, we know most of the fluid uh, has a viscosity uh, 10 to the um, uh, minus 2, and the velocity uh, usually larger than 1 meter per second, and the electric scale also larger than 1. So in the real life, we can say the Reynolds um, usually exceeds the uh, 10 to the 6. With this uh, num Reynolds number, we can understand the degree of the freedom for the turbulence flow is 10 to the 13. And now with this uh, calculation, let's see how the computing computer processing speed with the uh, flop per second. Uh, so when we say about the flop, if we assume the F flop per second can be executed in the single clock time with T, the clock time in second, the processing speed is will be F over T. Uh, uh, if we assume the technology for the clock time a few nanosecond, uh, then the theoretical peak speed is a gigaflop second, a billion flop second. Uh, for the CFT model with Reynolds 10 to the 6, uh, degree of the freedom is about 10 to the 13. When we use this degree of the freedom and we assuming each uh, degree of the freedom taking 300 flop in a single time step, that means we will have 10 million giga flop per second. It's about half a year to compute just a single time step. Uh, this simple calculation is showing us why we need to use high-performance computing uh, in the CFD, uh, particularly for the turbulence flow. Uh, the most uh, fluid flow is turbulent. So uh, in the application of the fluid dynamics, uh, we are facing with turbulence. It's a uh, non-repeatable and a random phenomenon. Uh, the literature reports that it's sensitive to initial condition also. And we have uh, many uh, different scale in this uh, phenomenon. Uh, usually we're talking about two uh, methods using uh, for uh, turbulence flow is calling Rans, Reynolds uh, average Navier stocks, and uh, the other one is large eddy simulation, LES. Uh, about the cost difference between these two methods, for uh, a regular uh, solution, it's showing the Rans 100,000 cheaper than LES. 100,000. Uh, it's not uh, a small value to uh, can uh, uh, close our eyes on it. So uh, sometimes we need to check which method is better to use. Unfortunately, there are no theory uh, to say which one uh, it's enough with the vans or which one not. For example, uh, the report in the study is showing sometimes a van doesn't show any sensitivity to change on the a geometry of the problem, and it's sometimes very important. Uh, here in this slide, it's a view for the uh, using the direct numerical simulation, large eddy simulation, and a Reynolds average simulation uh, for the uh, jet on turbulent jet. Uh, we can see how they are showing a very 
different uh, view and detail for these uh, turbulent jet. Uh, direct numerical channel, it's reporting the exact solution, LES, uh, using the filter and uh, removing some scale and size from the solution. But the Reynolds average usually uh, uh, using the mean values. Uh, with this view, uh, DNS, it's very costly. Uh, so sometimes, uh, most most of the times we can use it. But LES, uh, with high performance computing, uh, and we can accelerate the solution and we get good result. The result from the LES is enough. It's not exact same to DNS, uh, but in the industry application, uh, the result is enough uh, for designing and application. Uh, after this uh, talk about uh, the CFD uh, and uh, high performance computing that we are talk about it, uh, we, uh, I wanna present uh, part of our work that we are focusing on it. Uh, there is a history about the turbulence flow. Uh, turbulence flow, one of the challenge uh, in our century. Uh, as you can see, the scientist uh, Richard Feynman said the turbulence is the most important unsolved problem of classical physics, and it's still we don't have solution for this phenomenon. Uh, all uh, studies and work now is uh, based on the Richards and Kolmogorov cascade, uh, which uh, the experiment can prove the theory. Uh, this uh, causing the researcher. Uh, focusing on the specific problem and considering the problem in uh, different aspects uh, to see uh, how uh, behavior of the flow in this specific condition. Our work uh, carry on on the specific condition about the turbulence flow that they are talking about the boundary condition. Uh, the studies in last few years are focusing on the shear effect on the turbulence flow. When we have turbulence flow, uh, what's happening when there is a shear motion or strain motion on it? Uh, the report is showing uh, the shear motion or strain motion uh, making uh, the acceleration effect. So it's increasing uh, the acceleration. Uh, so from this view, without any equation, without any theory uh, for uh, the turbulence flow, uh, this uh, report is very important because many of the turbulence flow uh, has a, um, a strain or shear motion. For example, we assume uh, the uh, when the injection happening in the uh, cylinder of the car engine, uh, or when the flow passing the airfoil on the wind turbine, or on the airplane, or uh, on the any uh, object in the flow, it's happening like strain motion, and uh, the result showing is increasing the acceleration. Uh, one of these study work on the numerical solution, and uh, they did it for the simple and small model. To carry on this work, uh, we performed uh, the experiment work for the straining turbulence flow, uh, and this is the paper now on the review uh, from our result, and it's presented the result uh, to support the numerical solution. Uh, and now we uh, figured out the behavior of the flow in this situation. So we can continue and use this result to find pattern or prediction uh, for the flow. Uh, because uh, with the numerical solution, they using some specific uh, boundary condition uh, and initial condition, and uh, they solving the problem and they getting the result. Uh, but when we wanna use the machine learning, methods in anyone, we have uh, some 
we can call it like training input data and we will get the model from it. So with the experiment that is performed, now we have input data. Uh, we have the velocity is a function of the time, function of the location and function of the every component of the velocity also. Uh, so when we can, we can put all of these data together and uh, trying to find uh, a pattern or hypothesis, or we can call it a uh, model for uh, this kind of the uh, phenomena in the turbulence flow. Uh, after a few uh, efforts for uh, these data, uh, now we have a paper we uh, accepted and we will uh, present it in the uh, PAR CFD conference in Italy in May. Uh, we use this data uh, to uh, figure out the pattern and the uh, behavior of the particle uh, in the flow. Uh, we consider the computing time with the hyperbolic computing, and also we consider how much it's uh, matching with the uh, real data. Uh, with the training, we're checking the uh, test data uh, how to see how much they are matching. Uh, this is the main focus we have now on the parallel and scalable machine learning. Uh, to have a comparison, also we have some data uh, from the wind uh, during the time. Uh, so to have a comparison between these data, uh, when, uh, we will use the another data with different input to create pattern, and we will see how they are matching together uh, to see this pattern. It's uh, uh, useful in the reality. Uh, this is another example uh, for the finite element method that we talked it, and it's mostly about the solid mechanic. Uh, we have a paper now in the review for the uh, analysis on the Stuart platform, uh, which is mostly uh, uh, well known for the aircraft uh, simulation for the pilots uh, and uh, we uh, did this uh, computational uh, solution on the ANSYS. Uh, this is the last slide here uh, from this lecture. Uh, I want to mention the difference uh, between the time. Uh, these work for the this data from the real drawing, as you can see, uh, for the gas turbine, and uh, we were simulated the uh, blade of this turbine with the disc uh, in 2010. It's about 12 years ago. Uh, and uh, when we, uh, we designed this uh, model, it was very hard. Firstly, uh, we had to uh, drawing this model on the uh, SOLIDWORKS software or in the CATIO. Uh, finally, we figured out in the CATIO it's mm, working better at that time. Then we uh, import this model from the uh, CATIO to the ANSYS and uh, to create a mesh, it was very hard at it uh, was impossible to run it on the uh, common computer. Uh, but now at this time, uh, we can uh, see when we have access to HPC, uh, we can run it It's very easier. And especially now uh, when we have a remote access to the high performance computing. Uh, uh, before uh, we uh, ending this uh, lecture, uh, this is a, a video talking about the access uh, for the high performance computing from the cloud. Uh, and I will start it here.
uh, now uh, uh, the lecture to this video is done and I finish my talk. Uh, this is the references for this study and you can uh, find it in the file. And uh, this is our uh, research group uh, leading by Maurice and I'm so happy in this group and I hope we can keep going and doing uh, many things new. Uh, thank you Maurice for this opportunity. Yeah, thank, thank you me. very much Reza. Um, a very exciting lecture, very interesting lecture, very important lecture, as you have pointed out, turbulence is still one of the interesting phenomena in physics, which is not really completely understood yet and really a matter of uh, of really active investigation. And I think the last cases and then some of the computing you did with the time really makes sense to use HPC, right? It gives you really uh, a view that HPC these days is really necessary. And I'm also glad that you are in my group. So, I mean, the publications you have been showing is quite impressive as a PhD student. So hope you will have a good academic career. I'm actually more or less certain that you have a very good career in, you know, in the academics, just carry on. And this goes also for all the students in my course. Um, Reza is a PhD student that is also maybe a bit accessible for you to talk about him, what it means to be in the academic world, what it means to write papers uh, and basically um, you know, someone to maybe look up to and see how you can really be successful in your PhD studies. I think that's all so then. Much. Yeah, you will be well and a very good PhD student. You deserve that. And thank you very much thank again you. for this brilliant lecture. Um, we will continue now basically then with the next lecture the next time and see you then.